You ever wonder why some stuff burns dirty and some stuff burns clean? Let's go find out in the lecture room right now. right now. Hey guys, thanks for watching Science with Mike. Today we're going to talk about fuels that are made from hydrocarbons and as you know it's been well documented that I like watching things on fire and observing that. But you could also learn a lot about what things are made of at the molecular level when you watch things burn. Check out the smoke coming out of a tailpipe. <laughs> Haha, I fooled you. That's not smoke, that's water vapor. That's always a product of combustion. But check out this, that's carbon. And that's incomplete combustion. <coughs> Put a catalytic converter on that thing. A lot of the fuels and things we use to heat our house or push our vehicles around are made from hydrocarbon, carbon and hydrogen. And one thing that kind of dictates how they burn is the length of the carbon chains. This is methane. That's what's in the most of natural gas. And this is octane, what gasoline is based upon. Candle wax is mostly paraffin. But I want you to notice this. What they make is carbon dioxide and water. And roughly speaking, that the shorter the chain, the more likely it is to be a gas. And what burns best is the vapor phase of a fuel. Don't believe me? Check this out. This is what we call in science a candle. You ever think about what candles do? I do quite often when I'm daydreaming in church. Anyhow, what's burning on a candle isn't the wick. It's the hot wax being vaporized, and the wax has hydrocarbons, so it burns. And I could prove this to you, and you could try this you can actually make the flame jump. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow out the candle and then immediately relight it without touching the wick because it's really the vapors that are doing the burning. Didn't have to touch the wick at all. Cool. <laughs> Transitional element. Now we're going to burn some hexane, which is saturated. And then we're going to burn this which isn't even close to possessing a two to one ratio of carbon to hydrogen. This is naphthalene, and actually 25% of diesel fuel are compounds that are naphthalene or like naphthalene, C10H8, and you don't have enough hydrogen to make water and carbon dioxide, so we'll have to see what we're gonna get, but it ain't carbon dioxide. I just gave it away. And we always like having guests on the show, especially when they're not real. Our next guest is made out of tin. Please give it up for Stanek Claus. Welcome to Science with Mike, Stanek Claus. Oh, 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 hydroxide. I'm Stanek Claus, and I'm keeping a list and not being obscene of who's burning dirty and who's burning clean. Okay, uh, would you like to come in the lab and watch us burn things, Stan it, Claus? That's kind of just what I said. Doesn't anybody listen anymore? Okay. Okay, we've got Stan it, Claus in his place where he can observe, and then we're going to do a couple knowns, the ones we just talked about. We're going to take some hexane, and we're going to burn it, and we're going to see if it burns cr clean or burns dirty. But remember, um, oh boy, oh well, that's a lot. Uh, Remember, this is saturated, and generally, jeez, <laughs> that was a lot. Um, you can see a little bit of carbon, but not too much. And that soot is, you know, probably the result of it not getting enough air. But, you know, that's generally a pretty clean flame. Oh, this is way hotter than the North Pole. Oh, Nelly. Whew. Stanic Claus is, oh boy. Go for some iced tea right now. Next, we're going to take some naphthalene. Naphthalene, because of the big longer chains, is a solid. And what burns is the vapor. So you actually have to take some and measure it out here carefully. 
All right. What I've actually got to do, it's hard to light. I got to melt it first. And then the, oh boy, okay, jeez. Now I want you to notice the difference there. Of all that soot and carbon coming out, and when it gets going, it'll be really filthy. Naphthalene is what they use to make mothballs. And I have a joke about mothballs, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to say it. Keep it clean, Mike. Look at that. Actually, if you ever seen tires burn, when tires burn, it's like that. Really nasty. And, uh, you know, buses and trucks, they've cleaned them up a lot, but they used to burp out lots of this stuff. And that's because quarter of diesel is, you know, things that are derivatives or are naphthalene. And uh, really dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Naphthalene? You're a dirty burner. And so, in your stocking, I'm going to put a lump of coal. Oh, oh, oh. Hydroxide. OK, here's hexane. A little bit of soot residue. Naphthalene, lots and lots of soot residue. Nasty. OK, we did some known things. We know that there are pure substances. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to do some turbo blue racing fuel. Ooh, it's like blue gasoline. It's really cool. I think it's really refined. This is wood turpentine. Turpentine is a bunch of mixtures and uses paint thinner or whatnot. So we're going to do these side by side and decide uh, from what we observe which one's saturated and which one's not, which has more hydrogens on it. Stanic clause is going to observe for us. Gee, uh, where's my safety glasses? Do I get hazard pay for this at least? I don't know. Oh, 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 my goodness. Thanks for watching. Hey, Stanic clause, you made it. Do you want to sign off for us? Thanks for watching Science with Mike. I hope you're holiday is saturated with joy. Oh, 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 boy, I'm hot. <laughs>